Now I'm pleased to introduce you to Carolyn Wood. Um, Carolyn is the Executive Director of the Association of Canadian Publishers, uh, and the ACP is currently working with a number of other stakeholders in the book industry on a large public opinion uh, study. So this is a little different for us because it's a consumer-facing study, um, and, and uh, we're interested to see the results that come out of it. They're trying to understand how Canadian consumers view copyright, what their level of knowledge is about the book publishing industry generally, how they value books and in, in various formats and on various platforms. Uh, this, this is the study that is ongoing, uh, so the report will be out in a few months, but Carolyn's here uh, to tell us about what they have learned so far. Um, Carolyn it has worked in the book world for nearly 40 years. Uh, that's not calling her old or anything, I promise. Uh, first as a librarian, then in the publishing and distribution world, uh, almost entirely with Canadian-owned companies. Uh, so I think it's fair to say she knows of what she speaks. Carolyn, come on up. Yeah, and in case you think the book industry is even harder than it is on me, that is 10-year-old picture, so <laughs> don't, don't panic. <clears throat> Thank you, Karen. There are really three big forces that are shaking up the whole value structure of the book publishing industry right now. I have to learn the technology here. Okay. Um, one is the consolidation of retail in book buying into really one bricks and mortar chain in Canada and one online behemoth. Uh, another one has been, as you all know, the um, developing of a digital book marketplace. And the third one uh, landed on us in 2012 with the new copyright legislation that gave the educational sector the impression, I guess, that uh, anything copied in an educational environment uh, was free from the need to generate compensation for the author and the publishers. So these three rather large forces coming together gave all the stakeholders, as Karen referred to, across the writing and publishing sector uh, cause to think we should have a chat. And we decided among us uh, almost two years ago now to think about some research that would tell us how the general public, well, how all, all our markets, the general public and also <clears throat> the educational sector, are looking at the value of what we do at this point in our industry's history. So we commissioned ECOS, a very large and well-known research company from Ottawa, to undertake uh, research for us over three stages. So phase one is the one that's done, uh, was done in March. It involved public opinion online and phone both. There were uh, 1,600 respondents. They, they, I think they were a little positively self-identified as real book people, but by and large it was very gratifying to see how many of these people read regularly, spend money on books, print and e-both. So we got some information back from that that I'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes. The second phase is actually underway as we speak, and those are intensive conversations, either in focus groups or one-on-one -on -one discussions with stakeholders in the education sector. That's students who have to read the books and may or may not have to buy them, instructors who assign them, uh, administrators who organize the way those books are going to be acquired and we hope, paid for or not. Uh, uh, everybody who has a stake in learning materials within the educational environment. And once we have the findings from these two uh, phases, we'll take another pass at public opinion with questions that are informed by the findings of the first two and drill down a little bit more to understand how people feel about the value of what they read and the ways in which they should pay for it or somebody should pay for it whether that should be an education system or a taxpayer or a consumer, that would be a student or whatever. That's what we're going to find out. So here's a little bit of what we know so far. It is a reading country. I think Scandinavian countries probably have a higher proportion of people who read a lot of books, but Canada is, I have to say, compared to many other developed countries is pretty far, far in the lead. 
Um, one of the things we wanted to focus on was whether or not people, well, we asked people, do they ever download a book for free? And only 18%, well, many do, many do and are happy to say so, but only, I think, 18% admit that they've done it off sites that they know to be not legitimate. Lots of people do it because the book's in public domain and Kobo gives those away, or because a publisher may offer an ebook download if you buy the print book, or you know, various other ways of authorized per, uh, access to free downloads. So we asked people who do pay for them and who pay for books generally, what do you think about when you realize you should pay? And the number one thing is that the author gets paid. That's, that's, I would like to think that number would have been higher than 66, but still, it's what you would think people first understand is that authors need to be paid. The next one, that it's important to support the Canadian book industry, I never would have thought that would have got even the little majority that it did. So that was kind of good to know. That they think it's more quality in the content if it's a paid for book than if it's a free book. So that was really interesting to us because at another point in the survey, we asked, uh, what do you think is the difference between a, a self-published book and a traditionally published book? And they felt that the self-published book was more likely to be well promoted and marketed, but that there was not likely to be difference in quality of the content. <clears throat> so they seem to think self-published or traditionally published doesn't really make such a difference, but that you do get what you pay for. So that's something we will take on board. <clears throat> and last, not a big surprise for us, but you know, a little disappointing. They don't care really that much if the publisher gets paid. But we all know that. So when we have all the findings of all three phases, what are we going to do with that information? First of all, we're going to uh, consider whether we need new business models, new um, public awareness campaigns. There's a lot of interest expressed among the public in a rental system of e-books. They can already buy them. They can already get them free through the library. But some third option, maybe they're thinking of Netflix or a subscription service, we'll be looking into that. And we'll decide if we think the message we're sending out generally about value needs to be adjusted, whether it's worth a public awareness campaign or whether there are better ways for us to approach that. But first off, oh, oh, I killed it. There we go. <laughs> we will thank the OMDC and the Canada Council. This is very important research for us, and we would be absolutely uh, unable to conduct it without their help. Thanks. Where the book um, cannot, any book cannot be discounted in price, um, would be a better way to raise the value among the public rather than public public awareness campaigns. I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure which comes first in that case, the chicken or the egg. The French are able to have such a law because the public sees the value of books in that particular way. I don't know that that law drives the public perception. I think public perception allows that, that law to be there. Um, we did talk about this quite a bit among the, um, uh, within our membership when Quebec considered adopting such a law before the, the uh, PQ government fell. And I think we do, we do, most of the time, publishers try to live in the real world. And we don't think that such a policy would be acceptable to the majority of Canadians. It would be seen immediately as uh, something keeping prices up that would not be in the interests of the consumer. We certainly feel the current federal government would not support anything that they felt might be perceived as not in the consumer's immediate interests. So that policy, I think, has done a lot to shore up the industry and the, uh, the retail sector of it as well. But I don't think it's a very realistic um, goal for us here, sad to say. Hi there. Um, I uh, was wondering if you've been looking at a relationship perhaps with Wattpad, one of the startups that's in an Ontario that's done exceptionally well, especially globally, for uh, previously unpublished writers uh, and for the opportunities that may arise from uh, engaging on that platform as well. 
That's a good question. We know Wattpad well. <clears throat> and uh, I think there is lots of interest among individual publishers in connecting with Wattpad, uh, depending on the focus of their publishing program and the, you know, wherever on Wattpad that focus is reflected. We haven't, um, apart from ha um, hearing from them often and inviting them to talk to us about what things are going on, and through the OMDC we've ha been able to continue that conversation. But I don't think there's been much of a move for us for an industry connection in that way, but it's something to think about.